My fan is still running. That's a, that's a problem. Uh, air conditioning. Let me stop the fan. Take two. Welcome back, guys, for another episode of Code with Josh. If you're new here and you're looking for Josh, don't look too far. For obvious reasons, that's me. <laughs> In last week's episode, I dove into the data structures of Python, but I only brushed on the first two. I brushed on lists and tuples. Well, you're in luck, because for this episode, I'm going to dive into the next two Python data structures, dictionaries and sets. Before I jump in, I want to thank you guys for noticing. What's that? My haircut, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I did get a haircut. Um, going forward too, before we get into this episode, if you guys are new here, smash that subscribe button, because I come out with daily Python videos to help you guys through your Python journey, as well as a weekly Python episode. If you're looking for a handcrafted Python guide, I've got you covered because I made one for all my students on their first day of class. It's the first link in the description. Swing on by and grab yourself a free Python guide. All right, dictionaries and sets, let's get started. Dictionaries are a powerful data structure in Python and they store key value pairs. Unlike iterable sequences like lists and tuples, we cannot index a position in a dictionary, but rather we index a specific key, which then returns the value to that key. Wait, wait, let me show you what I mean. Well, a dictionary is a collection of key value pairs. You're gonna hear me say that a lot. I'm not jumping into everything today, only bits and pieces. There's too much to cover. Don't overwhelm yourself, just understand the fundamentals. Every key must have a value. Now take a look. To make a dictionary, we use the curly braces. In the past, for lists, you've used square brackets, and for tuples, we've used parentheses. Now we are using the curly braces. The name of my dictionary is films. Inside, I have two key value pairs. I have my first one, and I have my second one. The first part represents the key, so comedy is the key. Then we use a colon to separate the key from the value. Together, I have two key pairs, two keys, and two pairs. Something I tell all my students, and I want you to go to bed dreaming about this at night. <laughs> if you wake up in the morning and you're still thinking about these three words, you're gonna do fine. Dictionary key value. Take a look. Dictionary key returns a value. Dictionary key unlocks a value. What does a key do? You go home, you pull out your key. The key unlocks your door. It's the same thing for a dictionary. A dictionary key will unlock and return a value. Dictionary key value. Never forget. All right, over here I have a very basic example. I have a variable called funny, and the value to my variable is my dictionary key. What does a dictionary key return? The value. So if I print funny, it's gonna print the hangover because the hangover is the value to my key comedy. Dictionary key that unlocks my value. Here's another example. So if I break this down and I give you a code example, I have a dictionary, I'm gonna keep it nice and easy. It's literally called my dictionary. <laughs> Clever, huh? Then I have a list called passing scores. What I wanna go through is I wanna go through my dictionary and I wanna check every value. If the value is eight or higher, I wanna add that to my passing score list. So I'm gonna use a for loop, and I'm gonna say for every key in my dictionary, if my dictionary key is greater than eight, all right? That's literally gonna go score one, score two, score three. Every time it loops, it's gonna check the values to my key. If the value is higher or equal to eight, I'm gonna append to my list, passing score. If you're wondering about append, 
hey, last week's episode, it was about list and tuples. I'm gonna put the link to the episode, hopefully, fingers crossed, here, 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 somewhere. Check it out. Then, at the very end, I could print off passing score. It's gonna print off a list of 10 and eight because this value five was not greater than eight. Pause the video, take a look. Don't overwhelm yourself. There's too much to learn. You can do most of what you wanna do with these data structures with what I'm teaching here. In a future episode, I'm gonna to touch on more of these in detail. So I have a dictionary called person. You can see that there are five key value pairs. Five keys, five values. Let's start by getting the first name. Why don't I just create a variable called first? How do I unlock a value? Dictionary key unlocks a value. So I'm gonna take my dictionary called person, insert the key of first name. Ultimately, the variable first now holds the value that that contains. Let's run it. Great, and you can see right there the value returned is John. Looking good. Let's keep going. How can I add a new key value pair? Well, think of it as a variable. So my variable is like person. I wanna create a new key called occupation, right? The value of this new key could be teacher, right? If I jump down here and I print off, and I just print off my entire dictionary now. There you go, you can see my entire dictionary and at the very end I have occupation teacher. I just added a new key value pair to a data structure. Cool, let's continue. If I wanted to update a value, I could just take my dictionary, let's take our age, which is a string for the key, and the value I'm gonna change to 26. Now when I jump in here and I print off my dictionary, let's print off the age, the key, you are gonna see that instead of 30, which originally was in the dictionary, now I'm at 26, which is displayed right there. In the slides, I also briefly showed how we can use the del keyword. Del is a new Python operator, D-E-L. We use del, well, you can use it for other things. Let's just use it for dictionaries now. If I wanna delete an email, let's say, so I have a key key pair called email. I can go del, I can say person, insert the key I wanna delete. If you delete a key, it automatically deletes a value. Now when I jump in here, we print off, let's just print off the whole dictionary again. Do you see email anywhere? Nope, I deleted it, that's why. Bringing to my final one, I could jump in here and I could say, okay, if, uh, let's say, if city, in my dictionary. So I'm checking if something exists in my dictionary. So if city uh, is in my dictionary, then I would like to print off and let's say person, let's say city, because I want to know what it is. Else, why not just print off, uh, whoops, no go, dot, dot, dot. So obviously if I run this code, it's gonna work. There you go, New York. Let me make a quick change to that. Instead of deleting email, let's delete city first. Whoops, no go. That's because I deleted city, it doesn't exist anymore. All right, pretty cool. Let's head over and let's check out how you can use sets. But firstly, what is a set? You're about to find out. A set is an unordered collection of elements. Now a set is just like a list. If you're confident with lists, you're gonna do great with sets. The main difference in a set is a set does not allow duplicate values. That makes it great. If you wanna have a collection of elements with no duplicate values, think of a set. As I had mentioned, right, we have an unordered collection of data with no duplicate values. Here I have two examples. I have favorite flavors, because if I asked you for your favorite flavors of ice cream, you couldn't say vanilla, vanilla. That's ridiculous. You can say vanilla one time. So I have a set of favorite flavors and it has vanilla, coffee, and chocolate. Then I have another set of guesses, and that has 34, 66, and 89. Now notice, just like a dictionary, to create a set, we use the curly braces. But this time, instead of having a key value pair, we just have one element, kind of like a list. Of course, we also have our set constructor, which you could use as well. This creates a new empty set, but for this lesson, let's just keep it the curly braces. Now a set functions kind of the same way as a list. 
But remember, a list, we had append and remove. Now in a set, we have add and discard. They work the exact same way. The other three unique methods, these are quite powerful, and I'm excited for these today. We have intersection. This basically creates a new set using what two different sets have in common. That's powerful. We have one called union. You might as well just call it combine, because that's what it does. It combines two sets. Remember, no duplicate values. And the final one we have is difference. This will create a set based on what is different between two different sets. Calm down, I'm gonna show you examples. But use this, practice this, think of what you can do with this. All right, very straightforward, very basic example. I have set one and set two. Pause the video, look at the numbers. What do they have in common? What's different about them? All right, I create a new set, ultimately, called combine sets. I take set one, I combined it with set two. When I print off my new set, you can see what it prints. Notice it's only printing three, four, five one time because those were duplicates in the two sets. I have one called cross check and I'm using the intersection method to check the same or similarities between set one and set two. Well, in both sets, the ones that are the same are this time three, four, and five. This brings us to our final one, difference. I'm checking what is different between set one and set two. The answer is gonna be one, two, six, and seven. From set one and set two, they do not share any of those numbers. That is why they're different. Start to think of all the powerful things because now, if you've been keeping up with Code With Me, Code With Josh, you know four data structures. That's incredibly powerful. And you're off to a pretty great start. Let's jump back into VS Code and let's play around with sets. Now that I'm in VS Code, you can see I have two sets, Asia and Europe, and and Turkey is in both, Russia is also in both. I've used those in both. Okay, let's start off by adding a country. Let's say uh, Asia, I wanna add, what do I wanna add? Indonesia, I can do that. Um, and then before I show you what it's gonna do, I'm gonna say asia.discard, and let's choose to discard Thailand. If I come up here now and I just print off Asia, you're gonna see, well, what do you expect to see? Boom, there we go, there's my set. I've just deleted Thailand and essentially I've replaced it with uh, Indonesia. Okay, going on, that's the very basics. I now wanna combine my sets. So let's just say world. Let's say uh, world is equal to Asia dot, I wanna union it with Europe. Now when I print off world, you are gonna see a few things, but remember, no duplicates. So I'm only gonna see Turkey and Russia one time. The second one that's printing is our updated set, which our updated set is called world. Let me turn off our first set. Okay, let's create a variable called same, and let's say, okay, Asia, I would like to intersect where Europe meets. So let's say Europe. This is only gonna display now, well, it's gonna display Turkey and it's gonna display Russia, ideally. Let's turn off world. There you go, Russia and Turkey, intersection because they're both in those different sets. And the final one, you guessed it, let's say different. Let's say different is equal to asia.difference and then right inside here I can say Europe and we could jump down here and I could print off different. There's my set, Vietnam and Indonesia. Because Turkey and Russia is in both sets, they're not different. What's different about them? Well, Vietnam and Indonesia. <laughs> well, there you have it, crew. I've just dove into the last two data structures in Python. In the last two episodes of Code with Josh, you have learned lists, tuples, 
dictionaries, and sets. Those are the four built-in Python data structures. I am stoked to have you guys here, and I hope you took something away from these videos. If you haven't, checked out the previous episode, and if you're looking for a handcrafted Python guide which has all of this in it, it's the first link in the description. Go down and grab yourself a coffee. And if you enjoyed this episode, smash the subscribe button, because I have plenty of content coming out every week from my free Python newsletter, my podcast, YouTube, and my online courses. There's a lot happening with Code with Josh. Well, I will see you guys in next week's episode. And as I start to progress more and more, I am going to reveal the seven step series to mastering Python. This is the same thing that my students go through in person in class. And I want to start to give you guys that as well. Take away what we've learned in these last two episodes and spend some time coding on your own. I'll see you guys in another episode of, you guessed it, Code With Me. Wait, no, that's not it. Code With Josh. See you guys there.